for a lot of players, it all comes down to this. Hello everyone, my name is Derek and welcome to Detroit Lions Syndicate. If this is your first time on this channel, we talk all things about the Detroit Lions without the Y for yes or N for no. And if you want to know why I say that on this channel, all you got to do is go back and look at my previous work. The answer is right there. You just got to listen. The Detroit Lions have to cut down from 85 to 80 men between right now and tomorrow at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And while a few people can be moved around and maybe put on some reserve list, the Detroit Lions still have yet to announce any any cuts up until right now. If we do have to cut five players, according to Jeff Reisden, here's who his five players would be. Cornerback Cedric Boswell, tight end Derek Dees Jr., offensive lineman Kevin Jarvis, cornerback Mark Gilbert, and running back Jamar Jefferson. The Lions could also declare a winner in the kicking battle between Riley Patterson and Austin Seibert, though that seems less likely. I agree with the last part. It does seem like the kicking battle is going to go down to at least the last preseason game. But what really surprised me on his list was Jamar Jefferson, our seventh round pick from last year to be cut. But let me know in the comments below, how do you feel about the five potential people that could be cut according to Jeff Reisden? And do you think Jamar Jefferson will be cut? Not a ton of information coming out of Allen Park today. Dan Campbell did get in front of the media in a 12-minute press conference where he was asked about different things. And it came out that a lot of the starters will be playing this final preseason game for at least a half. But one of those starters that will not play is Jared Goff. This comes from Danny Rogers, the Detroit Lions sideline reporter. Dan Campbell says starters will play preseason game three at Pitt. Says QB Jared Goff will not, though, and will not talk coach into letting him play this time. He talked Campbell into letting him play game one. It looks like most of the starters will get to play except Jared Goff. So we'll see DJ Chark, we'll see Amon Ra, Josh Reynolds, we'll see the offensive line, DeAndre Swift, Jamal Williams. So we'll have a good idea of what our first team offense will look like just without our first team quarterback. At the helm at quarterback will be Tim Boyle. Jared Goff in the first team offense came out and played a drive in the game one against the preseason and we haven't seen Jared Goff since. Game two, David Blau got the first half start, Tim Boyle got the second half. And it looks like this game, Tim Boyle will get the first half and David Blau will get the second. Dan Campbell said in today's press conference that the backup quarterback job was pretty much neck and neck. And that this this is really going to be the determining factor between who gets the number two and who gets the number three. The question that I have is if we're going to carry one or two backup quarterbacks. I know when Matthew Stafford was here, a lot of the times we carried one backup quarterback, which I really don't like. But if a third quarterback takes up a roster spot at a position that we really need and we could use a player, whether it's wide receiver, linebacker, defensive tackle, whatever it is, then I would say let's go with two. My thing about going with three quarterbacks instead of two is that if the one gets hurt, if the starter gets hurt, then the second one is thrust into the starting role until he gets back. And then you got to go get somebody and bring them up to speed. So I would rather have three quarterbacks on the roster, but you can always put a quarterback on the practice squad. But those guys really get any type of reps or anything like that. So I don't know. But Dan Campbell said that he is not going to be talked into letting Jared Goff play this time. And you know what? That's okay because yesterday we saw that fifth overall pick, Kayvon Thibodeau, was injured, and he will miss three to four weeks with an MCL sprain. So what sense does that make to put your starting quarterback in and have him potentially get hurt and miss the first quarter or more of the season? It is a meaningless game when it comes to Jared Goff and the starters. It is a, a way for these other players that are on the chopping block to kind of come in and make an impression on their coaches so that they can make the team. So I think that that's a good idea. We saw Zach Wilson go down. He's going to miss some time. And it's no need to risk Jared Goff, knowing, especially knowing that he is going to be the key. If he plays well, if he stays healthy, then this team can go far, I think. So just like last week in Indianapolis, Dan Campbell said that Mike Tomlin is also going to play his starters. So both sides will play their starters for a set period of time. So let me know in the comments below, what do you think about the Detroit Lions starters playing without Jared Goff? I think it's going to be kind of a, a good and bad situation. We'll see a lot of how the first team will be, but we just won't have Jared Goff in there. So it'll be like one missing piece, but we'll be able to get a good look at everything but Jared Goff. But I'm okay 
with that situation because we'll need him when the time comes. My name is Derek. This is Detroit Lions Syndicate. We are on our way to 4,800 subscribers, hoping to get there sometime this week. Well within reach is that 5,000 subscriber goal that we have to reach in 20 days, which is when the Lions home opener is. So if this is not your first time here, consider subscribing to the YouTube channel. And if you want these videos to appear in that notification feed, then hit the notification bell. You guys are awesome. Take care of yourself. And as always, go Lions.